Pet Cemetery, terrifying story by the master of horror himself, Stephen King. Published as a book in 1983 and then adapted into a movie in 1989, Pet Cemetery tells the story of the Creed family, who moved to, <laughs> you guessed it, Maine, where lo and behold, terrible and evil things happen. Because in the Stephen King universe, Maine is the most terrifying place on earth. But it all starts when the family cat Church dies, when their strange neighbour Judd instructs Dr. Lewis Creed to not inform his family of the cat's passing, but instead bury the cat in a mysterious abandoned burial site, to which, having been buried there, causes Church to come back to life. Only now he is an evil, vicious cat. Sadly, this causes a devastating chain of events. That ends in terror and turmoil, where Lewis tries to prevent tragedy and save those he loves, but it comes at a cost, as those he brings back are now brutal versions of themselves, on the account that the soil of the ancient burial ground is spoiled. The only help Lewis has is Victor, a gruesome undead spirit of a man he tried to save, who, like Jack from An American Werewolf in London, acts as a voice of reason. This is definitely one of King's more intense and brutal stories. It doesn't hold back and wallops one hell of a punch. And the movie is no exception, as it deals with family tragedy and terror from beyond the grave. So naturally, how could I resist doing a top 10 things you didn't know about Pet Cemetery? We're going to check it out. Number 10, Zelda was played by a man. One of the most haunting moments in the movie is when the character Rachel Creed speaks of having to care for her sister who suffered spinal meningitis. Zelda is without a doubt one of the most terrifying and tragic characters that Stephen King has created. And when she's on screen, you can see this is one spooky, sick little girl. Never get out of bed again! Never get out of bed again! Only, Zelda wasn't played by a girl at all. In fact, she was played by a fully grown man, Andrew Huppetsek, apologies if mispronounced, who was performing under heavy makeup. And having the character played by a man does make it more unnerving and unnatural in a spooky way. But in addition to that, I always get the feeling that the whole turn of events in Pet Cemetery is a revenge plot by Zelda from Beyond the Grave. Hence the painting of the creepy old woman who is wearing the same dress as Zelda. Which, by the way, also features Church. And then when Gage comes back from the dead and is evil, he even takes on the guise of Zelda. Was he possessed by Zelda? Was this all a master plan? Was that weird painting a foreshadowing of what was to come? Okay, maybe I'm just reaching here, but I think there is, without a doubt, important underlining themes going on with the Zelda character in Pet Cemetery. Number 9. Directors Who Turned Down the Project Legendary horror filmmaker George A. Romero brought the rights to Pet Cemetery in 1984 and had planned to direct a movie. And considering his resume of zombie films, he would have seemed to have been the perfect choice for the movie. However, Romero just got too tied down with other projects and couldn't commit to directing, and the rights ended up getting sold to Paramount Pictures. Also, supposedly, and I do mean supposedly, at one stage, Tom Savini was even considered for directing duties. However, it was Mary Lambert who took on the role of director. More on her later. Number 8. King's Influences Some of the most important aspects seen in Pet Cemetery are indeed based on real-life events which happened in Stephen King's life, which inspired him to write the book. For example, his daughter's cat Smucky had died, which was obviously inspiration behind Church. 
and his son Owen wandered off into the road outside King's family home when a truck approached, nearly knocking him down, which would have been any parent's worst nightmare. Hence why King has explained that out of all his stories he has written, this is the one that actually generally scares him. And also in good old Stephen King fashion, King has a cameo in the movie as a vicar performing the funeral. Number seven, Church was played by many cats. Okay, let's not beat around the bush here. Cats are freaking evil. And nowhere is this more evident than that of the cat church. This satanic feline of doom made cats all over the world look like deadly fur demons who want to kill us all to death. However, church wasn't just one cat, but in fact several kitties. The part was played by seven cats, with each cat being trained to perform a particular routine and movement for the camera. Ugh, just when you thought church couldn't get any scarier, it turns out there's an army of him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Number six, there was a sequel which starred Edward Furlong. Indeed, Terminator 2 Judgment Day isn't the only sequel a young Edward Furlong starred in. In fact, in 1992, just one year after Terminator 2, Furlong left Skynet and headed down to Maine to star in Pet Cemetery 2, where Furlong plays the son of a movie actress who is killed by an on-set accident. So he goes to live with his dad in Maine, in the same location where the first movie takes place where lo and behold, the ancient graveyard gets mucked about with again, where all manner of supernatural carnage ensues. Director Mary Lambert returns to direct, and she wanted the movie to focus on the young girl Ellie Creed from the first movie, with her now being a teenager, and she even had an early draft script. But Paramount didn't want the movie to focus on a female protagonist, and swapped the gender around so the part was now a teenage male. Of which I think it was a wasted potential of not having Ellie Creed to return, to be honest. And if that wasn't bad enough, when King saw the movie, he instructed his name be removed from the credits. But to be fair, the movie isn't that bad. I mean, it's nothing compared to the original, but the movie stars Clancy Brown. And oh boy, if you thought he was crazy as the Kurgan in Highlander, you ain't seen nothing yet. He really turns up the insane dial in this movie. And you can just tell he's letting loose and enjoying the role. And he does steal the show. What are you doing, man? I'm just fucking with you. In other words, it's not a particularly good movie, but totally worth watching for Brown's performance. That guy's nuts. <laughs> Number five, original actor considered for Lewis Creed. So when the movie went into production, the biggest question was who was going to play the main lead protagonist, Dr. Lewis Creed? Well, an actor who was considered for the role was none other than legendary Bruce Campbell, who at the time was big in the horror world, having starred as Ash Williams in Evil Dead 1 and 2. Just imagine what the movie would have been like with Campbell in the lead. I think it would have made it feel like an entirely different movie, and probably would have not been so serious, and may have even had a more comical approach. However, the part ended up going to actor Dale Midkiff who I swear has the face of one of those actors who looks like he's been in loads of things that I have seen, and yet I just can't remember exactly seeing him in anything else. Number four, Miko and his dummy double. The movie starred Miko Hughes in his first film role. He was only two at the time, and Hughes would go on to be a major child star in the 90s, having starred in Kindergarten Cop, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, Mercury Rising, and Spawn. In fact, the part of Gage Creed was meant to be played by twin toddlers, but Miko was cast as the director found him so damn adorable. However, Pet Cemetery may seem like a pretty hectic and full-on film for a two-year-old to be starring in, which is why most of his scenes were shot separately, especially in the more intense moments, as not to traumatize the poor kid. And in addition to that, dummies of Miko were put together to be used as stunt doubles, 
once again for those moments which may have either been too dangerous or too intense to put the young boy through. And in case you're not feeling old yet, Miko, the cute little toddler from Pet Cemetery, is now 32 years old. Yep, where does the time go? Number 3. The movie was directed by a music video director. So as mentioned, the movie was directed by Mary Lambert, who is more well known for directing music videos, having directed videos for Janet Jackson, Mick Jagger, Annie Lennox, Whitney Houston, Sting, Motley Crue and Deborah Harry. But her most well known directing contributions are directing the Madonna music videos for Like a Virgin and Material Girl, thus no doubt making her one of the most prominent music video directors of the 1980s. So it should come as no surprise that she would cross over to cinema. Sadly though, after returning for the not up to par sequel, Pet Cemetery 2, her career in cinema kind of ends there. Which I think is a shame, as judging by her work, she seems to be more than competent and a talented director. Number 2. Removal of the Wendigo If the movie wasn't spooky enough, it was going to feature a demon called Wendigo, which in folklore is a Native American demon. Wendigo was mentioned in the Stephen King novel. However, in an early script, this ancient mythical demon was actually going to turn up in the movie. But it was subsequently written out, putting the Wendigo up there with the skeleton cowboy from The Crow as a strange supernatural being completely removed from a movie. I'm guessing because they already knew they had a pretty scary movie, what with the Zelda character and the Cat Church, they probably felt they didn't need to add a demon to the mix. Number 1. The movie's brutal ending was added at the last minute. As with John Carpenter's The Thing, after watching Pet Cemetery, the movie's end really leaves an impact and really stands out and leaving you the viewer demanding to know what on earth happened next as we see Lewis Creed reunite with his undead wife, Rachel, after burying her in Pet Cemetery, And just her face alone is enough for you to go to bed with your nightlight on. But if that wasn't enough, we see a knife getting picked up, along with stabbing noises and a terrible scream as the credits roll. It's probably the most horrific part of the movie, and not seeing what happened just makes it even more horrific. However, this classic memorable ending was added in at the last minute, because when the movie was screen tested for Paramount executives, they felt the ending was too tame and unsatisfying, and they felt that a more satisfying edge of your seat one should be put together. Hence the brutal ending we ended up with. Well guys, that was my look into Pet Cemetery. I hope you had fun while we dug up some old facts about this very scary movie. I think that Pet Cemetery is often looked upon as being one of the finest Stephen King adaptations. And it is for good reason. Anyway, I'm Minty, and stay away from cats with evil green glowing eyes. Listen to what I'm saying, peoples. They will murder you. Yeah. <laughs>